Hi, it's Kylie Koo. Thanks for joining me in my studio today. So, we're into February, which means a new monthly prompt for the Mixed Media Emporium. And the prompt that Nina and I have chosen this month is Masterboards and Backgrounds. Now, the reason we've gone for this is you may recall at the end of 2020, we said, what projects would you like to see this year? And Masterboards was a biggie. Lots of people wanting to do Masterboards. So we decided to combine that with backgrounds because quite a few people interested in backgrounds as well. And really, it's a very similar process. So our week one challenge is to create painted masterboards and backgrounds. Now, when we say painted, we're talking about acrylic paints, watercolour paints, inks, any kind of material of that sort. And we're saying add in, uh, you can stamp on it, you can stencil, anything of that sort at all. Just make it a kind of painted feel to it. So, for paper, I'm going to use these A3 size sheets, and I'll tell you a bit more about those in a minute. But, you know, use old paper, use old magazine pages if you want. Pieces of brown packaging paper would make good backgrounds. Uh, you could even tape smaller old envelopes together. Just use what you have. You can do anything. You can use anything to do this type of thing. I'm just using A3 sheets of paper just because that, that suits my purpose. Now, now, the paper I'm using is this 60 sheet mixed media pad from Arteza. It's A3 size, which is 11.7, uh, sorry, 11.7 inches by 16 and a half inches, which is 180 GSM, 110 pounds. Now, by the time I paint on this, it's gonna make it really quite thick. Uh, as it is, I would say it's a kind of medium weight paper, not too thin, not too thick but a nice one for, for paints to go on. So I'm going to use that. If you want to just create uh, background pages, perhaps in your journal, that's fine. This type of thing could be used in future as journal pages, but we'll see where we go with it. So you could actually take some pages in your journal and just do a background effect on them. So I will show you me doing one of those as well. Now, I am going to use a lot of my craft type paints, so a lot of this type of thing. I've got a lot of these that are getting near the end. I really want to use them up. Uh, you know, I'm not short paints in any way, but some of these, you know, after a while they start to get a bit thick and gloopy, so I don't want them sitting around much longer, so I'm going to use these. I do have some inks that I'm going to add as well, but I'm really just going to get into the flow of it. I'm not going to think too much about it. Use what you have, like I say, if it's watercolour paints, use watercolour. You can make some wonderful background effects with watercolours. Use what you have to stamp and stencil. And I'll show you a couple of different things in terms of stamping, you know, just household items. And I'll try and put a link to all the colours, all the products that I'm using be below. But don't feel you have to have actual proper stencils and stamps to do this. Make do with, with what you have. So let's get started. Uh, I will put this on at speed because, you know, I'm basically just going to be laying paint down and ink down. I've got these old cosmetic sponges that I might use for the stencils. I've got an old plastic card that I'll use to scrape paint on. And I'm really just going to take it from there. So I don't know if you can hear the rain in the background. It feels like it's been raining forever. If it's not raining, it's snowing. This for me is a great rainy day project or one of those projects where if you think, I don't know what to do, then just get a few paints out, throw them down. I'm not going to think too much about the colours. I don't want to create mud, but you know, sometimes mud's quite nice, but I'm just going to take it as it is. I will dry layers in between times, so I'm going to get started. I thought I'd just come back on at this point to say, here's the stencils that I'm using. So I'm going to use this Tim Holtz Harlequin stencil, this uh, Crafter's Workshop 
6x6 stencil, sten, stencil blah, 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 mini flower frenzy and these two I don't know what they're called but they're both from Craftbox UK they're by Snipart and I know that Craftbox UK were the only distributors I think in the UK but I don't know where else they're available but you could use something like Punchinella if you had that I'm starting with stenciling and I'm going to start in a black with a black acrylic uh, this is just a hobby craft craft paint and a lot of this will be covered up but I just want little bits of dark to, to kind of pop through whatever goes on the layers above. I'm also going to be working on more than one page because I want to create a few of these pages. So, start on this stage. You know, I love that just as it is. Uh, you see I'm layering stencils on top of stencils. To begin with, I was just doing one stencil at a time with a view to letting it dry and going back. But I'm just going to pick up those others now and just go over them until the entire sheet is covered. And like I say, I love this just now. I love it. But it will change dramatically. And I know I can recreate something like it in future if I wanted to. But I'm going to go back to the others now and make sure they're all covered. So I've pretty much done my first layer, which is just using those different stencils, just simply black craft paint. Undoubtedly the paint goes on better and goes further with the cosmetic sponges, but they do start to, to, to break up. But, you know, I would prefer to use that because it, it will last, but not to worry. Uh, it was just going on too thick with that, so that's why I, I changed to those. So I'm going to let all of these dry finish my cup of coffee and then I'll be back to do the next layer. So for my next layer all I'm going to do is to take three kind of different shades of kind of blue, blue, green. So here I've got Periwinkle, Spa Blue and Lagoon. And all I'm going to do now is to use my card should have got the black of it. Oops, that's a heat tool just about away. 
and I'm just going to scrape the paint over, not looking for anything other than getting a layer of paint down. So you'll see that the black is still showing, but it's really knocked into the background now. Exactly what I wanted. I didn't want it to be stand out as much as I liked it, just a black and white. didn't want it to be so stand out that it was dominating. So now it's a background layer on this. And I'm going to go on and do my other five sheets. I may vary the, the colours. I don't know, I quite like this as a starting point, so I might stick with this. But I'm going to do the exact same process. You'll see, getting right to the edges. Managed to pick up a little bit of black from a board sometimes. Doesn't matter, that's okay. Right, dry this, put it to the side and do another. This one, pure pumpkin, canary yellow and fuchsia. Same process. So, this one I worked on slightly differently. I put a paint down at a time, so rather than blending it all together, you know, you, you can decide if you want one colour to be more dominant than the other, then, you know, add them one by one and make different marks. You know, it doesn't all have to be blended in, just, just play. So, I'm going off to do the other four now. Just using different colours, taking three colours that won't jar at this point and then I'm going to wash up and I'll be back for the next stage, probably have lunch in between. So I decided here to use these Dilution blendable paints. I have never been a big fan of these paints uh, but I have seen them used with a wipe and I thought, well, you know, I may as well give it a try. I need to use these paints up. And I have to say, doing them this way, I now love them. I think I'd used them previously as more a kind of standard acrylic type paint. And I get now that using the kind of baby wipe or a wipe or I guess even a wet rag, slightly wet rag, would do it. That, that just makes such a difference. And I was so pleased with the way that these ones turned out. And so I'll be using these more in future. Anyway, just wanted to pop in to say that. And here I'm just using what was left over on the wipe. Really was able to get quite a bit of paint out of that. Now, I'd forgot to press the record button, so you missed hear what I was saying when I was sitting in the studio. All I've done here is to take some metallic gold craft paint. I've got a stamp, I think it's by Crafty Individuals, it's a script stamp, and all I'm doing is I'm going to apply this to each of my pages. So not doing the full stamp in every case, just doing little bits of it, moving it sideways, moving it upside down. I don't even know which way is up anyway with the stamp. It's, it's not a clear script. You can't make out what it actually says. So all I'm going to do is go over all my pages with this. So before I dry those off, I am just going to take this. I mean, I'll use this piece of daily paper in the future for something, but all I'm going to do is do that onto one of my pages from my journal. And here I am starting to create pages 
of backgrounds for the journal as well. Okay, doesn't matter how it goes on, it's just using up that excess paint. I can take the stamp, there's probably still some ink on the stamp. And again, in future, if that gets all covered over, it doesn't matter. It's not too thick on there, so I'm just going to turn it over, take my roller and roll that. The pages of the journal I could create in the exact same way as I've created those, but so I'm not going to do a full page because it would just be showing you the exact same thing. I don't know what that noise is in the background, but never mind. So, I'm going to move on to the next, I'm going to dry these big pages and then come back to you. So I really want to now to add some black and white back in. You know, there is black in the background, I want to bring some of it to the fore. Uh, I was going to use some bubble wrap, but I've none left here. I'd need to go into the garage for it, so I'm just leaving it just now. Just going to roll out some white paint, some black paint. And all I'm going to use is this wing cork and this cardboard tube just to do a bit of stamping with black and with white. So here goes. I don't know where my white craft paint's gone, but I've just got this other one, just an acrylic white. It's quite a thick one, this. Again, the tube's just about finished. Oh my goodness, that is difficult to get out. I'm going to roll it out as best I can. So, the last thing I'm going to do here is some little ink splatters and I'm going to use this Dr. P.H. Martin's Red Violet and I just want to get a little bit of red onto all my pages. I'm just going to use this fan brush and just splatter like this. I'm, I'm a wee bit worried because I always put splatters everywhere, so I'm going to try my best not to have it up the walls. Anyway, here we go. Just doing a quick retake here because I hadn't pressed the button earlier, but here I have my finished masterboard slash background papers and building up several layers. The first layer just to stamping with the, the just the stencils with the black paint through it, then some layers of paint, then I added the gold stamp, used a cardboard tube to do some circles the bit of punchinella just to add a little bit of black here and there. I decided against the the cork because I thought that was just going to be too big a blob. I didn't want such big blobs on this. And then finally just adding that uh, red violet 
ink, just little splatters. So I'm just going to very quickly show you these. And if you're in the Mixed Media Emporium Facebook group, all we want to see this week in the group are your background pages or painted masterboards. You know, so all about paint and inks and that kind of thing this week. Stamping, stenciling, not doing projects just now. Obviously, if you want to make a project, that's up to you. But please just show your... Uh, boards and backgrounds in the group and of course please be sure to say it's a February prompt week one so just a quick look at these Now, I obviously did six pages because that suits my purpose. Uh, there's something else I want to be doing with these, so I just wanted to do as many as possible today. And this is a great project for a day like today. It's raining outside, it's windy, I can't go out, so here I am sitting just doing this. And it's also a great project if you're not feeling up to doing terribly much. You maybe want to create something but you don't know exactly what. So, you know, just sit, get some paints, just splash them around, do some stamping, do some stenciling, anything at all. Don't have to think about this type of project much, you know. I did choose my colours to go together so that I wasn't creating mud, but, you know, beyond that, I didn't really have to think much about it. So if you like this project, please do uh, hit the like button, let YouTube know that you like this kind of thing. And, you know, I'd love to have a comment from you. I enjoy replying to all the comments. Sometimes it takes me a few days, sometimes up to a week, but I do reply to them all. If I haven't replied to a comment you've left, it's because I haven't seen it for some reason. Sometimes they just don't get through, just one of these little technical glitch things. So, thanks so much. I'll leave the link to Nina's video below and the link to the group below. And I, of course, hope to see you next time in my studio. So, as always, thanks so much for watching. Please take care. Bye for now.